With GPU prices still not back to normal, there is a lot of interest in low power GPUs. I was looking for a single car design and came across this Barco MXRT5500, which is a rebadging of the Fire Pro W5000. I got this card for $42 on eBay and was able to flash it back to a stocked W5000 pretty easily. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in doing this yourself. But that begs the question of how does a Pro card hold up in 2022, a decade after it came out? Starting off with Overwatch, we can see that at 1080p, low settings, we were actually above 60 FPS pretty much at all times. So even if when the action gets a little bit heavier, you're always gonna be pretty much right at the 60 FPS mark or uh, above this. Uh, that makes it a really good experience as long as you're not really looking for high frame rates, uh, 60 FPS is very playable for this game. Warhammer 40K Space Marine is an uh, older game at this point, but it's one that you could really max out and play very well with this card. 60 FPS pretty much at all times on the highest settings, highest qualities. And even when the action does pick up, the frame time stays pretty steady, and so it's a good experience in this game. Dirt 3 is also a really good game to pair with this card. The performance is actually pretty strong, being at somewhere around the 45 FPS with everything turned up, which is probably a little bit below what you want for a racing game, although the frame times here are really consistent, so you could play with it at this settings, but turning it down to high, you automatically get up to about 80 to 85 FPS, uh, which is a really good experience and the controls really well. Timberborn came out in 2021 as early access, and as a strategy game, it's much more of a city building experience. Uh, at the highest quality settings, this might be a little bit above what this card can handle, somewhere around the 45 FPS mark, but the frame times are all over the place, so it's not really a good experience. However, if you were to bump down everything by one notch down into the high setting and suddenly everything is pretty smooth, uh, you're going 60 FPS all the time. It's not exactly a perfect experience and you can see in the frame time graph there is still a little bit of wiggle room in there, but for the type of game that this is, this level of performance is more than playable. And then we come to the age old question of can it play Crisis? And for the most part, I would say yes. Uh, at 1080p medium quality settings, we're getting somewhere between the 60 to 70 FPS range, um, at least in the intro levels of this game. Uh, for the most part, I don't. you can't really play at a higher detail level. That would probably push it down below the 30 FPS mark at the highest. But if you're looking to just play this game, you're looking for a 60 FPS experience at the medium quality settings, you can do that. Torchlight 2 is also another game that pairs very well with this card. At 1080p, everything turned up. We're getting pretty much always above 60 FPS, at least when there are normal amounts of action on the screen. This style of game does ramp up fairly substantially at certain parts, so at those moments, it will probably dip below 60 FPS, but for the most part, this game will be a smooth experience. This card is limited to DX11 and not DX12, so newer games like Halo Infinite won't actually work. However, games like Control, which is about a couple years old at this point, does play fairly well at 1080p, but 720p internal resolutions on everything on low, and we're getting somewhere around a 60 FPS experience. There are some performance dips into the low 50s when there are a lot of effects on screen, but for the most part, you aren't going to really have any trouble playing this game at 60 FPS. Overall, it actually surprised me how much performance I was able to get out of this card, especially knowing that it draws all of its power from the PCIe slot. Games that are a few years old at this point play fine, most of them at above 60 FPS, but even newer games will play fine as long as you're willing to lower down the resolution. It's not a card that I would recommend people pick up to complete their gaming build, but if you casually game and you just need a GPU, this is a pretty good option.